Okay, uh, for some reason the event didn't start up, I'm just beginning. Okay, uh, this should be it. Sorry for, thank you for your patience. Sorry for the technical difficulties.
Okay, I'm inviting people. I don't know what's happening. Um, let's see. Um, uh, 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 it's a slow start. I'm trying to get this going. This is a really crappy start, but I'm going to get this going. I invited some of the people who said they would be here. Oh, John's here. Hey, -o. hey, -o. you know, <clears throat> this thing, the way this, <laughs> these hangouts start, make no sense. <laughs> I had more, more of a problem this time. It doesn't start up until I start another hangout. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. That is weird. Yeah. Uh, somebody's... Okay. Well, well on the bright side, it means I'm still on time. Yeah, there you go. to see you here. I'm going to try to erase the other event. Because I have like, there's a list of 22 people <laughs> that are going to show up. Alright, so what's the good one? That's the good one. This one, I want to cancel. Share, edit. Watching. Start. And edit. Let's see. This is an exciting beginning. <laughs> ah. ah, we have a new human. Hello. How are we doing, guys? Oh, it sounds like Jonathan Richter. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little late. It took a little longer to bury the body than I planned on. Ah. Uh -huh. He won that happens. He won that happens. Um, <laughs> you mentioned, like, uh, not being familiar with Hangouts. Well, man, so am I. Um... <laughs> These things are like crazy. Oh wait, this is John uh, Geo. I don't want to say John Victor. Um, 
I'm just trying to understand what's going on. <laughs> we all are. <laughs> Let's see. I see uh, two things. I see. I see John. I see a picture that you're drawing right. It's like. Yep. That's a. Uh, I've just got the page that I'm working on for tomorrow up. Uh, nice. All right. Since, you know, it's a lot more pleasant to look at than my messy living room and my fat head, so. Let me see. It's all good. It's all good. Wow, this is, this is unique. This is cool. Look at that. Wow. This is like seeing it. This is, this is so cool. It's like live TV. This it is. It's going to be broadcast on YouTube. Uh, well, it should be right now. Outstanding. Uh, YouTube members new. Let's see if this works. YouTube just recently found out has uh, actually they've been doing it slowly but surely, uh, allowing more and more nudity on YouTube uh, as long as it's non-sexual. <clears throat> which was shocking. I found that out from one of my latest commissions uh, that I'm working with, the Naked Life Coach. Uh, she does these seminars, and she does them in the nude. So it was kind of like, wow, okay, that's interesting. And uh, she, uh, she's the one who told me about it. She goes, yeah, she goes, now I can actually put my... She used to do it on Vimeo, and apparently it wasn't as easy to maneuver or go through. Uh, so she was having problems with it, and then she found out that YouTube actually will allow videos that are, are um, that allow nudity, to allow videos that basically have nudity that is a non-sexual nature. So she was just like, well, that's pretty cool. So she's been doing now, uh, taking those seminars that she's taping and putting them on YouTube. So it's it's a whole, whole different ballgame now. Okay, I see what's happening. Um... The actual event page never opened up a Hangout. So this is actually the new Hangout I created, which kind of sucks. Um, so this is basically a new Hangout that maybe, like, because there was supposed to be like nine people or something, some more maybes? Um, it is 13 people that said yes. And twelve maybes. That's um, let's see. I thought you guys see my my desktop, but I don't think you guys want to see. <laughs> Yours is much better. Yeah, you're not actually seeing my desktop, so yeah. you know. Although there's there's nothing untoward on my actual desktop, you'd just be like, "How does he get through all that clutter? What the hell?" You know, it is amazing how cluttered it does get because I have been there where it's just like, "Man, organizing this would suck for anybody who had to do." It. <laughs> I, I'd organize all this, but you know, I don't wanna. Right? Yeah. See, I know where everything's at. That's good. <laughs> I'm good with it. You know. And, in the, uh, the pirate office here, I have three monitors, and one is usually like my go-to station for emails or Facebook or stuff like that. And the middle monitor is mainly where I have work, um, and then the other monitor over here on the other side is pretty, pretty much where you know whatever else comes to mind, uh, or where I put like you know JPEGs I want to throw up in there to just have you know, available. So yeah, between the three of them, I, I managed to work it out okay. I don't know how I ever did it without three, though. I'll tell you, it's kind of wonky. Yeah, I've got I've got two, and I uh, don't have the hookup on my computer tower for a third, but I uh, want a third because uh, that's like I've never had a battle station. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's fun. I want to like, I want to feel I want to feel like I'm living in the future with three freaking monitors. <laughs> it's really fun when you actually like just throw on your desktop of. Uh, your, your live desktop of Matrix. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I've done that, and I'm just kind of like, yep, that's yeah. what I want. <laughs> You're doing it right. You're doing it right. Yeah. Okay. Whack, 
Let's see right. if this works. Um, there's a different link that Google gives me. Let's see if they get some people here. Uh, uh, we're three in the Hangout. I got one viewer. I just recently revamped the Paradox a bit, and uh, the end result is uh, a lot more room, which is exciting. My cats are happy. They have like an entire floor to lay on. <laughs> kind of thing. So now I have a dog, too, so now the dog can actually just feel like she's in her and Teams feels pretty good, too. I don't know if I've ever... I'll, I'll introduce you guys to Teams. This is Jeeves. What's the, <laughs> what's the name? My butler, Jeeves. Ah. My undead butler. Say something, Jeeves. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, Pirate Office has a lot of weird things. Um, I tried to get Skype on my... Uh, or Hangouts on my uh, iPad, and uh, I've, I've not been successful. Usually, because I don't have the iPad upstairs. Usually, um, it's being used by somebody else in the house, and therefore not in my hands. So it's really kind of why I'm doing so well. I knew it was. Yeah, that, that, that makes it more difficult. Yeah. It does it does? I need to get another one just to go with that. <laughs> just to have a you know a base station for the iPad here, because I need four monitors now. Never ends. Uh, I'm trying to message people via Facebook to see yeah. if uh, they get the right link. It was a minion. I was watching that the other night, and there's that one scene where a minion just goes, what? And I just like a great little voice bite for my uh, messages. Mm -hmm. I just got a message from you, Peter, about this. So. Yeah, sorry I'm late, guys, but uh, you know, it takes a lot to get up these stairs sometimes. That's yeah. that's okay. I was I was literally like two minutes ahead of you. Because <laughs> it takes me about a half hour to get from my paying job back home, so. That's great. Okay. I'm pretty lucky to well, get to work. Sorry. Uh, I'm trying to uh, get a hold of these people. Um, I'm not sure if they know what's going on, but the event page doesn't have the link to the event. <laughs> wow. That's weird. Well, you know, because I started another Hangout separate from the event hangout because that never popped up. Got it. Okay. Uh, so I'm um, sending a link via Facebook in yeah. hopes that maybe some of them see it. Yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, this is not going as planned. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to do some s serious reading to see why this isn't happening. I'm not even sure if this can go up on YouTube. I assume it is, but all right, we got two viewers, and I couldn't start the Q and A. Uh, but if you're watching this, thank you. Uh, let's see if I start up my YouTube page. Oh, I know what to do. This work. Okay. We might be, get a lot of feedback in a second. Okay. So they're watching. Is it? <laughs> Only the first time. After that, it feels a lot better. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. There is a YouTube page, and this is live. So, like, if I were to show the two okay. people who are watching this, this, this might be interesting. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> I had two of them, so I'm like, uh, I have a cut. I, I wish I could turn the monitor around, but basically, I have a cutout in the wall between the hallway of my home here, Braun Manor, and my pirate office. So the cutout I've kind of decorated all up, and I have um, on either side of the of the cutout itself a um, these. <laughs> so it's. There's these guys. There's also Chingy Monkey, which is kind of fun. Because everybody should have, and this is really my opinion, and if I was president, I would make this so. Everybody should have a zombie simple playing monkey. And this is Chingy Monkey. That is terrifying the hell out of me. Nobody sleeps in my office. I don't know why. Don't be scared. No, when I was uh, when I was a kid, that movie Monkey Shines came out, and I was oh, yeah. just old enough. I was just old enough that the commercial scared the living hell out of me. It was uh, creepy. It had that little symbol playing monkey. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I've got no problem with clowns. I uh, I quite enjoy scary movies. I uh, do not truck with freaking. Uh, Toy monkeys that play symbols ever. Okay. I don't do it. Have you ever actually seen that the, that symbol playing monkey in action? No, no, not since that no. movie trailer. Because um, no. <laughs> it really I was, is. Pretty. I was yeah. like six years old, and I was convinced I was gonna die. <laughs> the the symbol playing monkey. Um, if you actually find one of, of them, um, basically what they do is they uh, they do the symbol thing. But at some point they stop, and then their eyes open wide, and they're, they they're, they have like little lips that smile. Okay, um, so they do this whole thing, and it's just a whole, and they make the sound. It's really creepy. I don't know who invented that, but they they meant to scare children. It was awesome. That is absolutely horrific. <laughs> Why would you make something like that? I'm saying, I'm like, wow, someone really hated children that much, and uh, you know, we can have it. So, yeah, everything's pretty well. A little bit of everything in this place moves. I have a, uh, I have an animatronic uh, pirate chimpanzee. His name's Bobo. He's over <laughs> here. Um, let's see. And he's pretty creepy in his own right because he, he does look like he's he's an he's a chimpanzee. I mean, full on animatronic, and his eyes move, and you can actually control him. He's got a remote control, little radio control, and uh, yeah, he's pretty pretty cool. Um, damn, there's there's a few things, but most everything is kind of like nailed down, so no one comes in here and steals him because I fear that. From the sound of it, a few of those things just wouldn't be stolen anyway. So yeah, a few of them probably not. They might, they might, they might fight it. They they probably fight it. <laughs> Why did you beat my monkey to death with a hammer? I was I thought it was after me. <laughs> it was moving in my general direction. <laughs> Is that line from Scrubs? Dead things should be dead. <laughs> That's right. They had Rowdy. They had the the, uh, yeah. the, uh, dog. the, the yeah the uh, taxidermy oh. dog. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That was awesome. Every so often, especially because they they'd move it around and stuff, freak other people out and didn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> Great show. Oh, I'd so have that. It's so. Happy. How's it going, Peter? Uh. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where everybody is. That's how it gets done. <laughs> so yeah, I'm working on uh, a series of comics with um, her name is Nadine uh, Sybil Sky, and she's uh, really cool. She's really cool. She's down to her. They met her at the, the um, Arizona Comic Con. What's it called? Uh, 
Mesa Comic Con. Uh, I did there a couple of years ago. And that was that was really cool. I mean, you know, Mesa, Arizona, not really known for their uh, huge geek geekdom, but uh, there was quite a few geeks there. It was impressive. I uh, I can tell you some stories about that. I'm from Montana, uh, and the uh, the dude ran my local comic shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, was talking with his distributor once. This was a few years back, but I'm sure the gist still holds. Mm-hmm. And uh, just to give you an idea of what living in Montana is like for anybody who is partial to geeky stuff, yeah. uh, his dist- his distributor is telling him they did a study, Diamond did a study, of uh, comic book awareness for all 50 states, and yeah. Montana ranked dead last. Wow. And uh, my comic guy is like, including, you know, like, just being sarcastic, he's like, including Guam and Puerto Rico, and his sister is like, yes. Okay. <laughs> we we have, Montana, my home state, has wow. less awareness of comic books as a medium than Guam. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah. No, there. So, uh,. Needless to say, the geeks that do live in Montana tend to be incredibly passionate about their stuff. Hey, yeah, exactly. I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine that. Uh, Plus, I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I, I'm lucky enough that um, in doing comic book conventions, I do them less often now because it's like more, i got to actually be in the office to do work, um, you know, right. comic, or whatever, whatever I'm doing, whatever projects I'm working on. Um, and, but I, I, there was one time where I was doing like a 90 year and that still wasn't, you know, as much as some, you know, uh, and some are free, some are like for charity, some are just events, you know, some are just for kids. Like I'll do ones and it's kind of funny. It's like, you know, I'm not sure how much you're aware of what I do, but a lot of it's boobs and horror. <laughs> I will, uh, I, first of all, I'm not terribly surprised. Second of all, I, I, I'll be the one to be honest. I honestly I uh, don't know your work at all, <laughs> so. Yeah, that's no, okay. I um I generally do a lot of like well like I said boobs and horror. So those are my two those are my two grounding foundations. And, uh, as a guy who, as a guy who does comics with both boobs and horror in it, I can appreciate it. Right. <laughs> it's a good day. It's a good day. Anytime I get up from work for doing what I do, I'm never <laughs> bored. You know. Um. So it's it's one of those things where definitely I um I I, I enjoy promoting what I do, but it's kind of funny because I have one character, it's Cherry Bomb. She's a 17-year-old looking vampire and um, kind of sexy. Initially, it was supposed to be a TNA comic because that's where I got my start. Um, the first thing I ever did that was for public consumption slash money was uh, I worked on uh, uh, S.S. Crompton's, uh, one of his books, uh, who does, he does De- Demi the Demoness. Uh, okay. So he does like a lot of basic um, sci-fi porn comics, and I met him at the comic. I met him at Comic Con, and I'm like, "Oh, dude, I know your stuff." And I got started talking to him, and I'm like, "Yeah, you know." He's like, "Yeah." So I go, "Well, I do comic books." And at the time, I just literally started out. I was actually at Comic Con that year because of a, a um, Platinum Studios thing I was doing. So it was kind of like, "Yeah, I do comic books, sure, absolutely." Even though that was my first thing ever, right? Right. He's Although, like, I mean, technically you weren't wrong. <laughs> true, it's true. Technically, you know, and they did pay me, so yeah, I guess I do. So it's like, all right. Um, and he goes, well, I, I do a, a story that's kind of an offset of Demi, and it's uh, it's called Sex Squad. Are you interested in being a, a part of it? Do you, you want to do the, uh, the pencils for it? I'm not going to say no, you know. So <laughs> I ended up doing, um, you know, one of his first issues of Sex Squad. That was really fun. Like, wait, I'm going to do this for real? That, uh, I've never had the pleasure of being asked to do something like that, so I'm still waiting for that <laughs> on that moment. I was just happy that someone was going to pay me for it. You know, it's like, wait, I'm going to draw boobs and <laughs> X and a character named the transgender who's going to change their sex midway through sex. Okay, you got me. I'm in. <laughs> and, uh, the next thing I know, I just started. Uh, you know, I did that, and that was great. That was fun. I mean, there were, Working that comic. After that, I said, "Well," and I tried to do a couple other independent projects, but you know, I never really had. I never gauged how big or small something was. I knew they weren't. I wasn't working for Marvel or DC or nothing. But you know, you never know what could actually pick up and go, bam, explode, right? 
So, I mean, I did a couple of independent little books, and, and some did okay, and some did not. And some completely, like, halfway through the project, they vanished. Like, they just petered out. And um, so that, you know, you just kind of do what you got to do in the beginning. You know, I mean, I was working at Target at one point, and still trying to keep what I do alive. I worked at uh, Trader Joe's. Uh, I did anything I could to basically survive. At the same time, too, keep doing what I did. And it's really hard. I was you know, me and Peter were talking about this yesterday. Um, it's really hard to do a nine to five job, get off that job, and still have enough energy to really focus into creating a story, drawing a story, whatever you do in comics. It sucks, but. Yeah, that's that's pretty much been my life for the last four years because, you know, I I've got a web comic that I can't I, I haven't figured out how to uh, get any sort of real monetization out of it yet, mm -hmm. uh, but you know I, I I believe in it and I want to do it and it's what I've always wanted to do so I keep at it even though I'm. <laughs> that's uh, what you got. Generally speak now generally speaking, most most of what I want to do every day. Anyway, is just draw, so it's not usually a thing where I get home and I'm not feeling it, especially now that I've been in a good routine for the last couple of years. You know, it's just a habit, but uh, at the same time, it's like uh, I sometimes I miss shit because <laughs> you know stuff went down when I was in front of my uh, tablet. Yeah, <laughs> that happens. Uh, that happens. And sometimes it becomes you know when you create a universe. You get lost in it, you know, and, and you'll miss that party or this, you know, banquet or whatever. You know, and you're not sorry though. It's, it's. I mean, you, you're sad that you missed it, but at the same time, you're not really sorry that you missed it because you were doing what you love. It's. And, it's. I think. I think the healthy. Uh, I think the mentally healthy people just kind of accept that as as the yeah. sacrifice that they're making. You know. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Well, at least that's, that's how I convince myself that I am healthy. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what the voices keep on telling me. <laughs> that's what the, I, I'm inclined to believe them. They seem like they know what they're talking about. Right? I mean, they do. So, I mean, why not believe in them, right? I, yeah, I, they're, I, very, they're very assured. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really cool to be doing this. It's really cool to enjoy each and every day just waking up and saying, okay, I'm going to draw this next. Or, you know, I mean, I've done three graphic novels just for my storylines. Um, plus additional comics that tie into it, and eventually those will be graphic novels too. But it's the coolest thing is to be on this journey and kind of get an idea of where it's taking you. But really, it's taking you. It's not so much like, okay, I've set path. I'm going to do this and this and this and one, two, three, four. That's how it's going to go. No, it's like I have an idea of how this journey is going, and then the story will take me where it wants to go. And I mean, that's for me. That's how it kind of works. And, I love it. I, I love where it ends up because the end result is, holy crap, these characters know this character. Oh, tie-in. And it's just like, you're just telling me the stories. It doesn't work now. So. I, uh, my stuff is much more... I, I have a much tighter idea of where it's going uh, before that, but I mean, even even then, like my characters have surprised me from time to time. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, think that's, I think that is like the greatest... That's my greatest feeling as a creator is when, you know, I'm going to do something and then it, with a story or this character has always been planning to do this or say this and then it kind of doesn't happen that way. No, it decides, I don't want to be the no thanks. I'm going to go over here now. I'm going to be with this character. And, and actually, uh, this thing I'm working on right now is actually a result of that exact sort of thing because uh, the page that I was working on, like... Uh, I had the scene it was going to, like, it, it was going to work some way, and I just kind of realized midway, no, this this isn't working. Uh, you know, because, like, the character uh, wasn't going to... The character uh, wasn't going to say the thing that I was going to have her say in that way. It was kind of, like, against, you know, after being with, with this character for four years, it's like, oh, she's yeah. kind of dictating how these scenes go now. That's... Yeah. Mildly <laughs> creepy. Uh, so now I'm so now I'm redrawing the whole page because that page just was not going to work. Right, and, it's, and that's it's the weirdest thing in the world, but it's true. These characters will tell you, nope, nope, that's not going to work for me. But I'll go over here and do this. 
and you're just like, wait, what? what? Okay. <laughs> and you just kind of have to follow. It's like, it's having that girlfriend who basically is dictating the relationship for you. <laughs> kind of. <You> follow. <laughs> which, which, which let me tell you, it kind of sucks when you're working on an ensemble book. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. I, I, I've done a few books as commission work. Like, hey, I've got this idea for a story. And I was, it's something else me and Peter were talking about. Someone tells you, yeah, I got this, this idea for a story. And it happens everywhere you go. It's like I go to a party where I don't know a lot of people. Oh, you do our comic books. I have this great idea for a story. It's like, oh, God, here we go. Because, yep. you know. That is the most obnoxious. And I know I shouldn't be annoyed because, I mean, there's people just trying to make conversation. I, I realize that, but it is a slight annoyance when somebody is like, hey, well, you, should, you should do this in your comic. Yeah. I, the last the last couple times it happened, uh, it was at my new job, which is an office thing, and it was something funny that happened. It's like you realize I drawn a dramatic action comic, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no, we didn't actually read it like I asked you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's when I first started doing my stories, and people started I started showing people what I was doing. I had this one guy, and he was really like you know, um, I wouldn't say he's full of himself, but he's full of himself. And he, he says, oh, man, if you could write this, I could write. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I mean, hell, give it a shot. Why not, right? And so he goes, well, I want to write one of this. I want to write a story for your characters. All right, so kind of a collaboration. Okay, sure, why not? This is, here's, here's the story that I already have. Tell me how your char- my characters would go from there. And um, he writes... This, this whole script. And it took him like I don't know, a couple months. And um, he goes and he goes, Well, you know, here it is. And I'm like, Oh, great. And I'm looking through it and it has to deal with angels and demons, right? Right. So I'm looking at it and I'm like, Well, this character's, like, that's not the character who is in the story, though. It's like, this character here, like, you want it to be this the character that's already there, but that's not the name of the character. And, He's like, no, no, you should make it the name because that's that's what that angel does. <laughs> and I'm like, well, no, that's not what. And he goes, no, I, I I know, I know, that's what the angel does. And I'm like, I don't know, that's not what the angel does. Like that's not what they're known for mythology behind them. And so he goes, I'm gonna look it up right now, and I'll look it up. I swear. So I swear. He goes over to my computer. This is when I had a studio apartment in Canberra, and that was it was called the, it was Casa de Bron. Okay, mm-hmm. and. You know, he goes to my little studio area where I have my computer set up and everything, looking it up on the internet. Because this, this is an argument that's very valuable to win at this point. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And he's <laughs> going through it, and he's, I mean, he's there for like almost an hour, and I finally, I was like, I'm going to go sit outside now and have a beer, because rock on, dude, rock on. You look, you do whatever you got to do. He comes out after a while, and he goes, well, I couldn't find anything wrong with that. I'm like, oh, okay. So this is what his... his Future wife proceeds to tell me you should just change the name of the character, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Rock on, though. <laughs> wow, that's that's ballsy. I uh, I that I think that's actually a little above and beyond anything that I've heard because <laughs> it was impressive. I, I was like, really? I I can't say I know anybody, or at least I've never been told. Uh, nobody's told me of any stories where they've been like, you should just change that character anyway. <laughs> yeah, even though that character is, is, is not... I did. I, it's the same character, but I, I think you should change his name. And, and I'm like, no, why would I do that? I think that doesn't go anything with any of the story work that I've done, so no. Mm-hmm. no you hey, guys, uh, I'm going to step away for a minute. I'll be right back, though. Yeah, cool. I tried to get other people in. I don't know if they see the link or not, but... That's fine. The best. They pop up. It's cool. Hey, yeah. if not, it's this is working. <laughs> Just chilling, having a drink, calling yeah. it good. Yeah, and <laughs> enjoy, enjoying the long weekend now. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Yeah. Even though I barely get a break. The only reason I'm taking a break tomorrow, I normally don't take holidays off. Because it's like, you have your own business, and you don't have holidays. <laughs> no, no, that's... I'm uh, Actually, I'm looking forward to just having the excuse... To just draw all day, right now. Just uh, I, I don't, you know. I moved to a, I'm relatively newly moved to a new city. Uh, I don't have familial engagements. I 
am not a big fireworks guy. I don't have any parties to go to. So I can just draw. sit here and draw for yeah. like eight hours. Nice. And this, I am so looking forward to this. It's not even funny. I'm. Yeah, man, that's totally cool because it's like. And, and, and even though I've restarted this page from scratch, I will still uh, be able to hit my uh, deadline and post sometime tomorrow. So, you know. <laughs> that's cool. I have, I'm I am excited for tomorrow. <laughs> You're going to wake up and jump out of bed. I am. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. it's, yeah, it's, I, a weird, it's a weird thing to get excited about, but there we are. No, I mean, it would be if it was like, you know, I'm going to go work at Target today. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. No, <laughs> You know, no. like, holy crap, I'm going to sit here and do what I love to do most in the world. Like, this is it. And uh, I totally understand that. I get that. I, no, I, I worked customer service for a lot of years, and the people who are excited to do that really kind of, I'm, 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 I'm concerned for them, you know? Exactly. You, you just know that one day they're just going to show up at work. I, I was never actually as concerned for that as the fact that they might have actually had plastic surgery to have the grins, you know, plastered on forever. I know, right? Want to know how I got these scars? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I've known people like that. I mean, just constantly smiling and happy, go lucky, but you know they're going to snap one of them. You don't want to be at work. You can only hope they're going to call you and before work starts that day and say, you're not coming today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it turns out we uh, had too many people on schedule. You could have the night off. Okay, and then... Yeah. Winning, you know. And uh, <laughs> I'll hear you in the news report. It's fine. Go, go, go. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I worked uh, customer service for about eight years with a cable company. And uh, you want to talk about a special kind of hell. <laughs> yes, that's a special kind of hell. Oh, that's, that, that, that's not fun. I uh, yeah. I worked at my dad's restaurant forever, and that, you know... Rest, restaurant is special kind of insane because people are, uh, you know, really have the idea in their head that uh, they can just kind of manhandle you. You know, the customer is always right and all that. Yeah. Uh, and that's, but, man, I wouldn't have traded a minute of that for working uh, customer service for any kind of tech job because that's, nobody ever calls you if things are going right. No. <laughs> That's it's gonna be a constant yeah. barrage of just really, really ugliness. And, and, yeah, uh, most people most people coming into a restaurant are starting off happy. They're excited for the meal they're gonna have. You know, they you, it came because they wanted to come. Exactly. Most most people uh, most people going to a restaurant are there because they want to be. Uh, nobody is ever calling the cable company for any reason except that something went horrifically wrong. Usually, yeah, that's the case. My, I'm, I'm here for 12 hours, and the tech never showed up. And there are some some events where they do call because they are kind of happy. I used to work the graveyard shift for the longest time, like maybe two years. That was an experience because, I mean, people who would call in at 3 o'clock in the morning are going to be really, really out there. And, uh, I had guys, I, there was this one guy, because we had like a small little crew, right? There was one girl who worked there, and I swear, no matter what she was talking about, and was oh, she's always very professional. No matter what she was talking about, she sounded naked. <laughs> that, that was her. Thing. She had this voice that just sounded like she was completely naked talking to you. <laughs> sure enough, there would be this guy, and we handled the Malibu area, right? You know, a lot of rich people, but right, right. One guy, and I swear, for the two years that I worked there, he would call. And it turns out, like, he, his account he had enough history on him over the course of the two years I was there. He was a lawyer. He was well-to-do, Malibu. And he would call just to hear her speak. So he'd call over and over and over again until he got this one representative. Oh, that's just creepy. Oh, totally. And then she... That is, that is the creepiest damn thing. <laughs> being a lawyer, he was very smart. He would ask her nothing but cable questions, but you hear in the background he was, was watching Skinamax or he's watching some kind of porn, and he oh. always asked cable questions. So he knew because that's when you can cancel the call if he starts getting really, you know, ridiculous. No, he knew. So he basically would ask, "So tell me about this connection here." 
or tell me about these channels here. Tell me about the adult pay-per-views. <laughs> it was really That's, creepy. That is... I'd have to listen in on the calls just to make sure everything was going okay. And I'm like, I think I've done something really wrong in my life to be here. <laughs> That's, that is the creepiest damn... Yeah, I had old. La- I had this one old lady. It was great. She got mad at the representative, so I was like the supervisor on duty. She got mad at him, so oh, so you know, calls me up. Hey, I got this caller. They're not happy. I'm like, well, what's the problem? Well, she's like 75, and she's trying to keep her husband awake. Um, but they're trying to watch adult pay per view, and she can't figure out how to work it. The pay per view. Please tell me it's the pay per view she's trying to work. <laughs> yeah. And he, like. I can only guess because she's so upset right now. So I'm like, all right, transfer the call. Transfers this call, and this lady is 75, and she's trying to say how she wants a specific kind of porn that she knows he'll he'll stay awake for so that they can get their groove on. And I'm just sitting there going, I wish I was anywhere else but right here right now. <laughs> and she kept on going, and then eventually she's like, Larry, Larry, wake up. Wait, wake up, where? And then she goes, hold on. And she goes off into the distance. And then I hear moaning. And I can't cancel the call. And I'm like, oh, no. They started without me. They started, with, they started without getting the pay-per-view. And I'm like, okay, it's been about three minutes in. Well, I, oh, I think we have a, what? Oh, she's done. All right. I'm going to cancel this now. <laughs> Oh, she was so <clears throat> hey, Ed. Hello, hey, Ed. Hey. Hello. Glad you made it. I don't think we, I don't Ground, think we have Ed. <laughs> Ground control to Major Tom. Well, uh, I gotta say that was that was the that was definitely a story. Okay. <laughs> There was some craziness that happened to that place. I mean, serious. It was weird. It was soap operas that entailed, because it was a call center of about 700 people, maybe 900 at its prime. And um, the things that would happen just between the reps. I mean, there was a uh, there was a FBI bust. Um, someone was selling counterfeit money, so there was a counterfeit ring in the call center. In the call center? Also, like, like, literally, there was undercover agents pretending to be reps to find out where these fake 20s were coming from. Because it was a call center of about 700 people, maybe 900, at its prime. That's great. <clears throat> the things that would happen just between the reps. I mean, there was a... Uh, hey, Ed. What's up? FBI. You are watching a video? I was. Um, that link so only sent you to the videos to watch it, you know? Counterfeit link. Oh, wow. Uh, I have to check it out. In the call center? Also, like, like literally, there was undercover. Um, you got something playing? The Ed. Flight, uh, <laughs> big 20 what do you mean? Because it was a call center. <laughs> I'm getting the uh, video from a couple minutes ago from your... Literally, Ed, you're back in time right now, about maybe a minute. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Let me throw yeah. that shit off, then. You weren't in the video? <laughs> wait a minute. Look at that. How do I sound, Ed? You only sent you to the video, so watch it, you know? How's that? Hey, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, have Ed, and we don't funny. have a time machine, so we're okay. <laughs> so what was it, like, delayed? We were hearing you guys talk, and yeah, you yeah, yeah. hear it echo? Fucking awesome. Oh, I, I heard that oh. FBI story twice. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> Man, this is like the worst hangout ever. Um, <laughs> I am trying, man. I am trying. Short of showing my own boobs, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Well, no, I'm just saying in regards to like, you know, uh, I wanted to make sure everybody got the invite. Let's see. No, I don't want to do that. Actually, I will let you. I'll be right back. I have to use that latrine really quick. Right. Okay. Let's see. Invite well, if it's any consolation, we're having fun, so. 
How do you get um, yeah. the video to show what you're working on? Uh, if you go over to the left side of your screen on the Google Hangout, uh, there's a green box with kind of an arrow in it, and uh, oh, shit. that'll that'll get uh, that should be your screen share, and it will give you an option of uh, which Windows or desktops that you want to show. This year is share. It's me. I don't know why I'm so pixelated. My normal video is fine. Maybe because the Hangout takes all my juice. Yeah, wait a minute. Maybe. Hey, there we go. Here's the links. Okay, event page. No. Video embedded. YouTube page. No. Where's the actual Hangout? Well, Actually, I can't show that. Never mind. Uh, I mean, if I put this shit out there, people would be like, the publisher would be like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it turns out that we're not actually going to need your services on the book anymore for, uh, you know, spoiling the... Yeah, we like, for six months. on page 19, and here it is, I'm lettering it, and people will be able to read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, right, don't do so that. Just, what worked for you guys? Um... How did you get into the Hangout? By direct invite? Yeah, when you sent me that invite, that's how I was able to get in. And we got the, all the links you sent just went to the video so you could watch it. Yeah. Great promotion. <laughs> yeah, I uh, got through, yeah, just off the invite. Off yeah, the video I got a call. That was private. <laughs> I got a call from you, um... Peter, and, and that's basically what, remind, you know, boom, it's like, okay, i got to run upstairs and quick to the Batmobile, to the Hydrofoil, and um, I decided to you know, chime in through that. I just went to hang out from Google, I Google. And, uh, I'm, just, I'm just picturing your house now with those uh, hydraulic, the hydraulic bat pole. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> it's, it's true. So, no, it's only I, things I, even more awesome. <laughs> You know, I do, I do try. I, actually, I would love, if I had about a million dollars, what I would love to do is to expand this out a bit, make it more like the Playboy Mansion's office, because um, Hef has, like, the coolest office setup. I mean, it's, it's completely packed with 60 years of junk, right? I mean, just stuff. Everything that's people given him, chandeliers, is covered with panties, the whole nine yards, which I'm... Working on. I got a couple up there already. One of them's from Julie Strain, so that's very cool. Um, <laughs> but what he also had out there. Well, it's you know she's a friend of mine, and I told her I was redoing the pirate office, and so I got lucky enough that she actually mailed me a bunch of like headshot stuff, like autographs, and she sent me because she sells them on on her eBay. She got her eBay store, <laughs> and she gave him. She goes, "You're one step closer to having your Playboy man." And I just thought it was the coolest thing. Anyhow, um, what he also has is a circular staircase that goes from his bedroom to his office. I would love that. I'm not even joking. That would be the ultimate because eh, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. Now, granted, my bedroom's not that far away from my office that I need to actually do the stairwell like that. But still, it'd be really super cool. I'd be happy with a bat pole just right there. <laughs> That's Was that's it, one of those that's one of those things. Regardless of your opinions of Batman sixty six, everybody wants a fucking bat pole. Absolutely, absolutely, because it can double when you're not using the bat pole. Total stripper pole. There, yeah. You know, someone comes over, they want to you know have a couple of, of rum shots. Stripper pole, rock on. Get the lighting. <laughs> I have black. I have black lights all over the place. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Ah, uh, rum. So yeah, us uh, hanging out. This is uh, great work by John. John, I'm seriously, I'm impressed. It's good stuff, man. Oh, thank you. That's uh, that's very kind. I'm I'm getting closer to where I want my art to be. Mm -hmm. After Absolutely. <laughs> I, I I started on this comic four years ago, and uh, you know, somewhere I realized as I was working on it, it's like, wow, I'm actually 
not nearly as good an artist as I thought I was. <laughs> Just somewhere in there, I you know. You know, I said that before I drew my first sexy zombie, and it was after that that I said, you know what? Yeah, there's really no limit. You just keep on going. <laughs> it's all it's all a matter of getting better. You never get good. You just get better. Exactly. It's just a constant state of improvement, and an end result that is. Hey, it actually looks like a person on top of a zombie hooker. <laughs> Which is really what we're all shooting for, is you know. <laughs> you dare to dream. It looks, like, it looks like an accurate zombie hooker, because exactly. You don't, I, that's an, no, you, don't want to, you don't want the details wrong on that no. uh, undead prostitute right there. That's, it is awkward when the zombie prostitute. You can't tell if it's an elbow or a boob. Yeah, that's, that's just. You don't want that. Nobody wants that. And, and nobody wants to pay for that. <laughs> Although, I don't know. I, in Guam, they might. Well, that's... Guam is apparently pretty weird. <laughs> apparently <laughs> apparently, decently big comics fans. Who knew? <laughs> well, I'm blown away. That's 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 a life lesson for the night, folks. Right there. Well, I mean, it might have... As far as we know, Guam might have been just above Montana. I mean, that's... <laughs> But you know what? I bet it's a really close knit group out there in Montana, though. Seriously, it is. You know, people yeah. who. In so far as in so far as anything out there is uh, is close knit, yeah. Because I mean, there's a. You got to understand, it's the fourth biggest state in the union, uh, yeah. and. And this is honest to god true, uh, cows outnumber people. <laughs> wow. There are eight hundred thousand people in the busy season. And there's approximately 1.2 million cows at any given time. Uh, so people people tend to be sparse. They tend to value that, and that is not uh, really conducive to a bunch of people getting together in a comic store, comic store or gaming store and hanging out. Although, like I say, the communities that do develop are, tend to be really passionate about it. So that blows me away, man. That's like cows outnumbering people. That's a horror movie. <laughs> No. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, the steak is awesome. I yeah, oh, I bet. Huh? I, will, I will never, I will never, uh, I will never not give credit to my home state for uh, having awesome freaking food because you can get steak right off the cow. Uh, that would be so. I'm a big barbecuer. So oh that yeah, awesome. see there you go. Uh, get it cheap. Yeah, you can get it cheap there, right? Yeah. Like uh, there. Are, some butcher shops that operate that will just even deer or elk or something. If you bring in a deer or elk, they'll uh, butcher that for you very, very cheap, uh, and it's absolutely fantastic. But if you're a, if you're a city boy like myself and are more interested in comics and art, eh, you're a little bit shit out of luck. Well, <laughs> it's a you're it's a little rough to get by. Uh, well, you know that's. I just I just have a great new comic though. I mean, think about it. Horror comics, you know, in the middle of nowhere, in, in, in the middle of space, no one can hear you move. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm digging it. Peter, what do you think? Yes. <laughs> then, good, good answer. <laughs> oh, that's correct. <laughs> uh. um, well, I invited people supposedly to hang out this time. Uh, you know, cool. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm bummed. It's been it's been that kind of day. Really? Uh, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. <sighs> last page. Oh. That would that sounded like the last page stretch right there. Yeah. <laughs> Your body starts tensing up because you realize you haven't even blinked for like an hour or two. I've been working on this thing all fucking day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See. Off yeah. and on, though, my fucking hand is like, it's all like sore, so I gotta take these breaks. You know what? I, I usually just go ahead and I duct tape it together in the, in the drawing position. So that way. <laughs> you just work it. You just work it. I don't care if it's a clubbed fist, it just it works. <laughs> Tell them it's a style, it's a new style you're working on. I, you've got a duct taped club of a fist on your hand. Yeah, this no, it's a drawing guard. Absolutely. This one's a club hand. This one's a hook. 
I'm rocking it. <laughs> Bring it to the party. That's dedication. That's dead. Seriously. I, you know what's really funny? Um, when I first started doing this, like, literally all day long, and I would go eight hours to, I think my all-time greatest was anywhere between 16 and 19 hours straight of just drawing. It's going on and on and on and on. I literally, my hand hurt so much and was just kind of in that position that I literally had to move the fingers. Kind of like, I don't know you guys remember, um, was it uh, the, uh, the cop, the, the, the head of the police in uh, Young Frankenstein? How oh, he had that, oh. uh, that hand? Right, 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 right. Literally that. I was like, wow, it's the same thing. That's awesome. And then, yeah, after a while, I just started really, my hands started really, like, killing me. Like, every day was hurting and hurting, and I just kept, just worked through it. I didn't care. What else did I have to lose? My hand? Screw it. It's not going to work for me. I don't want it. See, the, ni the nice thing is, if you just lose your hand, then you can still, like, get an artificial one or a hook or something and stick the pen in there. Exactly. Well, I, it's I not ideal, but, you know. You tell them, mold it like this. <laughs> Look like this, like this, there, and then just you know, have it work for you. I mean, it's no matter what, keep drawing. That's my that's my life lesson. <laughs> so, I um, I'm gonna have to be leaving pretty soon because dinner's on, and pizza calls, guys. You know, I, I, hey, man has hey, to man, I, we can't uh, we can't keep you away from pizza. That's not right. Maybe we would be wrong. But well, thanks uh, for coming out, man. It would have been total disaster. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is totally cool. I mean, seriously, I would love to do this again with you guys. You guys are cool. I promise next time it will be much better, a smoother <laughs> setup. <laughs> I mean, anytime I get to show a pirate monkey off is a good day. I'm not yes. gonna... That's that's true. <laughs> really can't, can't do can't... that every day. Uh, but hey, it was good meeting you, man. Good to meet you too, John. Definitely. Um, guys, I will talk to you on the flip side. All right. See ya. Yeah. See, that's why I like this whole thing, meeting people. Yeah. Let's see if anybody's... What's up with the headset? We got one person watching. What's up with the headset? What's up with the headset is because I don't have a mic. Oh. That's my mic. If you can see me right now, I'm also rocking a headset, so don't feel bad, Peter. <laughs> well, put it on display for everybody to see. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Uh, so what's everybody working on here? I'm just doodling. I am working on tomorrow's update of my webcomic. What is that? Uh, Everyday Abnormal. It's an... Um, how to? I'm still working on my pitch. The way I, <laughs> the way I tend to describe it is, uh, it's like uh, Dresden Files meets X Men. Okay. If that, uh, just to kind of give you a quick idea of what's in it. Yep. Uh, although the tagline that we were kind of bouncing around last week was, uh, let Let's see. Uh, gunfights, monsters, magic, and sometimes a boob. Not all the time, but, you know, every once in a while. Uh, I put the link for his comic in the event page. There you go. And I appreciate that. Because I don't think... Well, if you're not there now, you can check out the event page later. Because we don't have a share. Well, we have a chat. Let's see. It's in the chat. Every day I've known. The comic series. And. Yeah, this weekend I'm finally going to. Uh, Finally, going to purchase a couple of uh, real people URLs. 
Leo, people. Talk yeah. Town. <laughs> I was I was more gonna say everyday abnormal dot com, but <laughs> I gotta see what's actually available to purchase. Hopefully that's there. Uh, you just messed up. Somebody heard you say that, so they're gonna buy it. Oh yeah. Hey, per- random person who heard that and is now buying that out from under me. You're a jackass. <laughs> That was mean. You shouldn't have done that. I, I won't charge you too much. <laughs> Dude, we had the fistofjustice.com URL, and Mike let it run out. Now this domain bank has it, and they want $200 for it. Oh, mm, man. Well, there's always, like, net or... Well, yeah, we picked um, to org. I don't know why, but... Well, I guess if there's more than one of you, it could be an organization. <laughs> I'm just going to set it up for the digital webbing site and just point it to that. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing with mine. I just It's easier to say, hey, I've got a comic called Everyday Abnormal, and say that it's you know everydayabnormal.com or evab.com, and uh, have them go to that, than everydayabnormal.thecomicseries.com. But don't put a www in front of it, because that will screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know uh, digital webbing, John? I don't. Really? That's shocking. I've heard it, but I, I I've heard the name, but I don't actually know what it, what they do. It was just um, it's a website where you go and get jobs, basically. Well, that's part of it. <laughs> yeah, and then I then I started I started a publishing company through it, and I used to run like industry news and there's all kinds of like tips for artists and writers and has a good decent sized forum we just ran what was it in January I think we ran a contest for first comics we found a penciler and an anchor so we got a job for those guys nice are they in motion right yeah now? they're selling their books through conventions oh okay See, that I need to check out because, uh, well, you know, having jobs is nice. Right now I just threw a placement. For a while I um, I was publishing news, but it was just me. And me trying to do that plus all the work I was doing, I just couldn't keep up, you know. And plus, yeah. and plus for news, everybody's going to go to, like, comic book resources or Newsarama or those places, you know. And so I just didn't want to compete. So I kick the site down and I just throw a big spider with the link to contact and forums <laughs> <laughs> till I decide what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah it's tough to find a niche. Although, uh, you can still kind of do the news thing if you uh, go more like Comics, Alli- Comics Alliance and do uh, commentary and that sort of thing. Yeah, but yeah. I, I just don't have the time for that. Especially now since I want to start drawing. You know? Well, that's fair. I had, a bunch of guys I, I had a bunch of guys I went to, and I asked them for help, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Nobody ever came through, though. Everybody got too busy, or they didn't really know what the hell I wanted, you know? So I just sat. Yeah. Which is fine. Am I going to ink you uh, one day? Yeah, as soon as I get drawing again, I'm going to start. You saw, you saw that um, doodle I did, right? I did yeah, do yeah. That. Threw it up there. I said, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna do that every day." And eventually, I'll try to sp- spend more time in the morning before I start my workload. You know, and um, I'm gonna be drawing one of the issues, and then hopefully from there I can just keep drawing the book while I'm getting paid doing what I'm doing. You know, doing this other stuff because drawing that book is not gonna make me any money. Right. It uh, it <laughs> it generally doesn't. Right. You know, and I and I know that, and I know that going in. So I'm just doing it just because I want to, you know. Uh, which I think, really, for doing a comic in 2014, that's the only reason you should be doing a comic, because there's no guarantee that it's going to be hugely successful, and uh, it's kind of a it, I have all you know that topic of conversation always comes up amongst webcomic artists and that sort of thing. I'm always like, you know, uh, feel free to try and make money at it, but don't count on that money, because uh, that is a 
That's a rough proposition. Yep. It's cheaper than do, but you know, it's not an easy thing. Just had uh, uh, my friend Sky Watson his birthday yesterday, so who? Scotty Watson. Okay. Uh, does his own creation talent, and he works with uh, Carrie Kelly. Red Hand Studios. Um, what is it? Dead Reckoning, which is a futuristic uh, western. Uh, Sky is an old friend of mine. It's his birthday today, so shout out to Scotty. Happy birthday, dude. Hey, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was like. Ah, oh, man, I would love to invite him to hang out, but he's probably doing birthday stuff, so. But nobody responded to my messages, so. It might just be us. Bummer. It is. I'm bummed. Uh, I'm actually not going to be able to make it next week, unfortunately. I should be good the week after that, though. Okay. Uh, maybe next next time I'll do a different night. I don't know. Now that this one failed, maybe I should do the same night. <laughs> yeah. What, what time? What time is it over there? Over where I am, it's uh, nine, almost nine thirty. Yeah, you're on the same time zone as me. Where are you? Where am I? Yeah. Kentucky? Okay. East Coast. Where are you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, I don't want to cover this guy's face up. Why not? I don't know, but... That's what word balloons I'm on the about. last page. I'm on the last page, and so they ran out of pages, so they're cramming all the dialogue in here. Uh... Oh, that ain't right. <laughs> and so I'm trying to figure out the best way to lay this out so some of the cool art doesn't get covered up. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you just send the script back to the writer and like, yeah, I'm going to need something else. <laughs> this is not happening. Dude, if, if this wasn't being broadcast, I would tell you some fucking stories, but... <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to name names, bro. I'm not even going to bother... I might, it might slip, so I'm not going to do it. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do a secret hangout just for that. <laughs> so you like this this type of hangout more than the Skype one? Um, you know, the times I've done a Skype hangout was mostly just audio. Um, that's what we've done, right? With our group, John. Say what again? Uh, when we've done Skype Hangouts. I, uh, mostly I just like, over Yeah, I do like this better just because uh, I have the option of showing my screen, which I'm way more comfortable with than uh, being on camera. But you can, um, you can share, share a screen with Skype, too. Uh, I could not figure out how to do that when we did that uh, last time. Uh, is it a pay for service or I forget? No, it's. I was doing it the other, you know, last time I was on it because somebody was using it. I said, "Dude, how do you do that?" He goes, "You got to pay for it," and I'm like, "You do?" And he goes, "Yeah, there's this menu option." I'm like, "Where?" And he, he told me, so I went up and I says, "It's right there," and then I was able to share it. So I guess it's like a feature nobody really knows about. Uh, well, I, I, I know it's there. I just never um, did it in the group. I did it one-on-one -on -one with people. Uh, uh, but I wasn't sure how much it expanded. But uh, I do it. I do a Google Hangout because then 
it gets, you know, recorded and posted up on YouTube. That's why I do it. You know, for anybody who cares. <laughs> People should, because <laughs> this sort of thing I find weirdly fascinating. Well, I mean, people, you know, uh, this event, this event that failed, I had over twenty-two people interested in coming to it. Um, it's just for whatever reason, the event uh, didn't open up a hangout, and I'm not sure uh, most of the people, like you know, didn't know where to go. So, I'm yeah, sure. I was looking all over. I didn't see any link to like join it, you know. Yeah, well, it's because on that event page, there there wasn't one other than what I was posting, because it's actually a different event page uh, that has, you know, uh, possibly the the thing that opens up a hangout. Um. So, you know, unfortunately, like, you know, most people don't see it happening and then just leave after two minutes, so. But I'll get it right next time. I'm going to research the hell out of it and figure out this hangout business once and for all because this isn't happening again. All these things a couple times to work the kinks out. That's just, that's yeah. just part of doing things like this. Yep, yep. You know, so I'm sure we'll have big, uh, big shows down the line and get a bunch of people involved in drawing and, you know, because uh, a main reason I'm doing this is because I don't. You know, I live in a, t a town that doesn't have bars or, or you know, get out of here. So really? booze for that matter. Um, yeah, it's it's a dry town, dry county, whatever they call it. Um, I, dry town. So there's that. There's also what? <laughs> dry town. Yeah, it's a, yes. yeah. Uh, I think it's called Dry County, or whatever. You know. Oh, I know, I'm New York. Absolutely gobsmacked. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's also no comic store in town, or, or you know, I think Walmart sells a couple of comics, maybe. Dude, why um, that town then? <laughs> because my girl's here, and we're engaged, and I moved in with her, and uh, then we got our own place now, so. Usual reason. Yeah. Uh, and there's there's uh, no no sort of people into comics that I'm aware of at the moment, but yeah. I have to go to Louisville or Washington. Um, yeah, which isn't next door. Hour and whatever away, but so you know this this is my way to hang out with a bunch of comic people, uh, a bunch of artists. Um, you know this is sort of my drink and draw. You know I got coffee, but <laughs> <laughs> coffee is usually better for the drawing anyway. <laughs> Keeps yeah. you alert. Keeps the pen hand moving. Yes. Um, I just ruined my drawing. Um, I'm just doodling, like I said. So. Alright, let me see what we're gonna do here. Got this random balloon, but I don't know if I want to put it in this panel because of the way it's drawn. The only thing I can do is if I keep it in this panel, the tail will look like it's coming out from underneath this chick's dress. 
That's a talented oh, chick. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, now I'm. I know that you can't show it, but now I'm <laughs> you really want curious to see now. To see what, I'm now really curious to see exactly what the fuck the artist was doing. <laughs> oh, the artist we're, is awesome. We're, you're in this conundrum. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because of too much dialogue, like you were saying. Well, Where do you put it? You know what it is, is a lot of times, like a writer, he'll sit there and write something, and then the artist gets it, and he'll draw it. Sometimes he sticks to the script, or he'll come up with some really cool um, camera angles, and so then you figure you would give that to the writer, and the writer would go in and start tweaking stuff and moving shit around and stuff, you know? But what happens to speed up the process is they do that after it's lettered. So then I get the edits, and then I get to shuffle stuff around, you know. That, uh, it's more work. Lettering is a thankless job. <laughs> it fucking is. <laughs> like, it's not, uh, you know, it's not as uh, alien and scary to me as uh, traditional inking is, but... Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a job that doesn't get any respect, but you yep. you can tell a good letter from a bad letter, and uh, anybody who hasn't done it thinks it's easy. So, yep, I I imagine that a professional letter just kind of gets shit on all the time. <laughs> yep, it happens. But. I fucking I, love, I like it though. It's most of the times I really really like it. You know, but, uh, I get to I see a lot of stuff. You know, I get to see all. I get to see like a lot of the artwork um, before it's finished. Because sometimes I let her off of pencils or layouts, um, and I get to see the progression of it. And then I finally get to see the full color version. Um, I get to read stuff before everybody else gets to. That's a that's a good point, actually. <laughs> yeah. And I get to work on a lot of titles that are drawn by some of my favorite artists too. It's like people I um, used to read all the time in comic books. I'm working on their books now, you know. That's a uh... Yeah, there are worse things. There are a lot <laughs> worse things, actually. It's funny yeah. when I was when I was just inking. Um, I almost never read scripts or, you know, in a, in a big way knew what the heck was going on in, in the issue. Um, I just ink page by page, yeah. and if there was anything important for me to notice then the editor or the artist would pencil would uh, point it out. But I didn't read it until it was published. <laughs> That's funny. I uh, I guess I assumed that pretty much everybody would just get the script beforehand, but Well I could, but yeah, I never asked for it. I just, you know, I wanted to read the published version. All right, this is done. Nice. Finish this, and now what do I have? I have my list. So let's see, I just did three books so far this week. And I have one, two, two more books to do, and then two more in progress. Busy guy. I'm doing like, I think I'm doing like 12 or 14 books a month. Holy cats. <laughs> Is that, well, I guess, you know, there are some editors that do an insane amount of books a month. Um, but is, is, is a typical letterer, like, doing a large amount like that, or? Not really. It's just I, I just pushed and pushed because, um, I don't know, I'm just like in this mode nowadays where I just want to just constantly be working, you know? Yeah. Because ever since I gave up the Xbox, 
<laughs> it's like all that free time I'm gonna. Yep. <laughs> I, uh, I can't even. I've got a PlayStation Three since I moved into this new apartment. I haven't even hooked it up yet. Like I just have no time whatsoever if I want to get my two pages a week. I used to um, make time to play the Xbox. <laughs> It was, it was a weird thing. I got to a point where I started doing a comic regularly, and I realized that uh, I realized that literally the difference between uh, making my dead making myself impose deadline, but I mean making my deadline was uh, you know, whether I spent any time at all playing video games. <laughs> Turns out, if I spent any time at all playing video games, <laughs> I, I, I'm already not a hugely fast artist, and I work full time. Uh, it doesn't take much bef- much in the way of video games before I uh, suddenly am missing shit. <laughs> They're time sinks. They're terrible. Yeah. They're so fun. I know. <laughs> I haven't really played in years. No, not a serious video game. I just... I just um, my brother uh, finally sold his apartment in Brooklyn, or, or at least emptied his stuff out. And I had a box of stuff there, and my copy of Final Fantasy twelve maybe, was there. And, uh, you know, one day I guess I'll pick up a PlayStation 2 or 3 or whatever it would work with and, and play the remainder of the game that I started and that game came out essentially. I uh, I remember the apartment I was in when that game came out. That was a long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> it's you know it might have been around 2006. I'm just throwing a number out. No, I think that's about right actually. Yeah, because uh, I'm pretty sure I played that before I left. Um, New York to move to Kentucky for the first time. But, uh, yeah, you know, back in the 80s, I was kind of a pirate. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we were all doing crazy things in the 80s. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, it's like that. (laughs) Every video game. It was, you know, it was all my time was consumed with video games. You know, it wasn't working or whatever. Uh, I used to have a uh, huge habit myself when uh, PlayStation 2 was relatively new. I uh, played at least one copy of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 to death. Mm. Uh, but this kind of slowly got out of the habit and Really, that's the only reason that I'm doing this regularly now. Because back in those days, I was stupid and just assumed that you know, one day I would become a comics artist. And then, <laughs> as time went on, I sort of realized uh, that that wasn't going to happen on its own. So, and as I started doing the comics art, then video games started going away. Yeah, yeah, I could see playing them if I worked for you. Uh... Gaming studio, or some kind, of kind of. Because <laughs> then I'd be making big bucks. <laughs> It'd be worth it. Oh, good lord! I made her head huge. Ah, maybe I made her head small. Can't tell. <laughs> That's nothing. I fucking overrode a page and didn't realize it. I gotta re-letter a whole page because I overwrote it. <laughs> nice. That's that's no good. Yeah, but I got lucky that the page that I gotta redo only has like ten balloons. <laughs> it's not something like there was one time I was working on a page and it had like um, twenty-four balloons on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then my that's computer froze at the end of the page. Oh Jesus. 
And I was yeah. freaking out. And I was like, holy shit, this took me forever to do because I had to, like, squeeze everything through, cut out balloons behind characters, all this shit, you know. Oh. And I got to the last panel, and I was looking at it, and I went to save, and then my computer just froze. And I was like, fuck. And um, so I rebooted it, and I loaded it back up. And this is something I trained myself, and I forgot. Every time I create a balloon, I automatically save because of that. And that's happened to me in the past. And so when I loaded the page up, I had everything on there except for the last panel, so I didn't mind mind that at all. You know? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good skill to develop. <laughs> yeah, and so now it's like automatic. You know, the function keys, I just press a button, boom, save. See, I've gotten I've got a good enough computer right now that I've it doesn't really freeze up like that. Yeah. So I've kind of gotten out of the habit. <laughs> so someday in the future when this thing is running quite so smooth or I'm rocking a uh, not as great piece of machinery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'm gonna have to do all that crap again. This this this, this thing is only like five years old. It's just it's running hot. So what happens is it um it's cooked with a video card so it just freezes. Um, so that's why if I take breaks every time, I like like right now it's running 137 degrees. Holy hell! You should feel it. You put your hand on the top of the computer, you can feel the heat coming out of the out of the back. You know, on the uh, on the plus side, you could just stick a plate back there and uh, <laughs> cook dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some eggs, some steak. You got yourself set up there for the rest. Yeah, I don't have to get up. No, all I had to do is just train my dog to go get me a beer. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna get this thing fixed eventually. I think it's just one of the fans is probably busted inside, or it's just like sticks. But there's probably like this glob of dust in there. Yeah, if it's running that hot, I mean that's probably the most. Likely uh, culprit. That's what it's got to be. But the thing is, the way they make the Max is, is you can't really take them apart yourself. So i got to bring it in. So I'm waiting for my workload to lighten up a little bit. And I'll bring it in one day. And they'll just pull the cover off and say, hey, look at this. we got like five pounds of dust in here. <laughs> and I'll be like, no wonder it was like running hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mine collects dust really easily. I just cleaned it up last week. I've got to clean mine out. I haven't given it a good cleaning out in way too damn long. <laughs> Need to keep this thing in tip-top shape because I can't afford anything else. <laughs> then we got viewers. Two viewers. Hey, peoples. Two uh, viewers. Who you are. You counting yourself? No, yeah, I mean it says two viewers on on the thing. It shouldn't be counting any of us. Because when I was on the page, it was showing the viewers and it showed you down as one of the viewers. It said one viewer, one viewer, and it had your name on the event page. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why it says that, but. Yeah, as me as a watcher. Um, I see. It says uh, everybody invited, not responded. <laughs> Whatever. I don't understand. You hang on. I don't understand you. Damn you. Um. Didn't even set up the uh, Q and A because when the Q and A is hooked up, then we can communicate with people watching in a weird sort of way. So I used to do this um, on Skype with a bunch of guys in the morning. We just shoot the shit while we're working and stuff. It was pretty cool. Honestly, I've kind of fallen in love with this 
whole thing because I work so I work so much more focused if I've got people to talk shop with and yeah. uh, I'll be I'll be honest I can't really cheat and not work if I've got my screen showing. <laughs> yeah, and if you got other people there talking with you, you know, you're doing the stuff. The only thing that I don't like is that is it gets published, so I gotta be careful about what I what I say about certain things, you know. Yeah, we could always do secret ones. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that I'd like to join in for because, frankly, I love hearing the uh, gossip. <laughs> Yeah, you get to hear like stories, like some horror stories and stuff. It's kind of cool. <laughs> I uh, I don't have much of that since I'm not actually uh, I haven't actually been published by any of the uh, big companies. I just have the uh, I just have the two creators that were dicks to me at a comic book convention. So. <laughs> yeah, see, you'd be able to talk about that shit. <laughs> yeah. I'd be and able. I, to, there was one time I was in. On and Barry Smith was a dickhead. <laughs> Barry Smith, he doesn't do anything anymore. Is he still in comics? I don't actually know. Like I haven't, I haven't even seen his stuff advertised since the nineties. Yeah, the last thing I saw him advertised was uh, Storyteller. Those giant. <laughs> Exactly. Books. That's um, sold. That sold, didn't it? I so, want yeah. to. I, I don't know how big it sold. I know it was pretty. Uh, I know it was like kind of a event at the time. Hey, they were priced high enough. I, I, you know, I think he probably made money off it. <laughs> well, and dude was kind of a legend uh, for his stuff in Conan and Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> There, he he's got. You would think that uh, Barry Smith would have enough of a following that would just buy anything uh, his stuff just because he did it. Yeah. yeah, you know when I went up to Diane, I uh, just missed out on when, when he was up there. So I got you know Bob in charge probably, which was good too, but. I love Barry Smith's work, and my brother was a big fan of his stuff too. It's a, it's such a it's such a raw style. I I just love looking at it. Yeah. One of the coolest books was um, Avengers 100. I don't know if you ever saw that. Yeah. Uh, that's where Iron Man first had roller skates. Where he first had what now? Roller skates. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Such a cool intro. Like <clears throat> the intro to the, each character um, was played out on I don't know how many pages, four or five, whatever. But it was just such a great issue. <laughs> I uh. I understand why people don't like it. I thought always thought it was a little underrated. Uh, but my favorite part of uh, Marvel's Civil War was uh, when somebody is talking to Tony Stark and is like trying to use a movie to illustrate their point, and uh, he's just like, "I've got a suit of armor with roller skates in it. I don't find time for movies," <laughs> <laughs> which is just like my favorite line. I don't even remember that line. I was uh, from uh, one of the uh, Bendis tie-in issues. Oh, it was yeah, like from it, it wasn't actually from the main series, but that was my favorite thing to come out of it was just that line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've got a flying suit of armor with roller skates in it. I don't I don't much care for movies. <laughs> yeah. uh, I imagine he's a busy guy. You know, if well, well, you know, if if you're uh, if you're wearing a fighter plane that pops out roller skates, that you can then zoom around with, you know, <laughs> pretty much anything you see at the movie is gonna be kind of dull by comparison. <laughs> <laughs> I 
He's uh, too busy staying up late at night making a couple of new suits. Wow, this page came out better the second time. There you go. Always improving. Yeah. Always, always, always. Now I almost kind of want to just letter somebody else's comic page just because I've never done that. No, that's my job. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily do it for pay. <laughs> I, I just kind of want to just do it just because I've never done it. Well, you hear him, everybody listening, watching this <laughs> later in time. Just email uh, John directly. <laughs> or, get, or, you know, actually ask him to do it since he's the guy who... Uh, <laughs> Is, makes it his job, and uh, I don't want to take his work. <laughs> <laughs> but you said free. That's, that's, yeah, I want to look free. <laughs> <laughs> I did say, well, you know what? You get I, to, uh, you're going to have a long line of people wanting, wanting you to deal with their books. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be first come, first serve, and it'll be entirely <laughs> one whether I like you or not. Yeah, and then... <laughs> At least the uh, 20 people that are going to watch the video in here. <laughs> I hear firecrackers. It's that time of year. Tomorrow's the big night. I am so excited because I don't have to... Uh, it'll be the first time in my life I don't have to dodge drunks with explosives. <laughs> Because my new apartment complex does not allow fireworks. What, in, inside the building? In, inside, inside the confines of the... Uh, actually, the whole city doesn't really allow them inside the... Inside the city limits, apparently, but... Mm. But the uh, apartment complex has stuff posted on all... I was like, yeah, we've got people whose job it is to watch for this, and we will ask you to vacate the premises. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm okay with this. Mm -hmm. Considering how many times I've almost had limbs shot off uh, by errant fireworks through uh, somebody else's fault. <clears throat> uh, out here, they, they do a whole show that they do um, above a lake or something. Uh, we go to a park, and well, every, everybody goes because it's like packed wall to wall with people and cars that drive up on the grass. Um, and just watch it from there. It's, it's really a, an event over here. It's kind of nice. It's because there's no bars over there. <laughs> <laughs> I like that um, thing over here too. That's where my girl lives right now. Yeah. Yeah, I said I can't make it. I got this book I want to finish. The only bad thing about it is trying to get out of the park afterwards. It takes about two hours to make, you know, to move like 30 feet. Yep. So since this started, I guess we'll go another 15 minutes, but I don't, I don't think we'll go longer than that. Uh, I'm still really bummed it didn't work out. <laughs> but next time, you should edit um, the uh, you should edit the uh, prices right the before <laughs> in post. I could edit it, but. Uh, you know, I don't know. I think <laughs> I'll just leave it as is. Editing's kind of a pain in the uh, ass. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain it. I'll explain in my uh, day five video tomorrow that uh, 
what happened with this show tonight. For anybody interested? Uh, but yeah, you know, maybe next week I will do the same time. Just you know, give the people a chance to uh, make it to one if they want. Uh, but you know, I just did sort of a, a mass invite to everybody in my circle and. Um, but it only went out to five or six hundred people, and I have much more than that, so I don't know what kind of group it grabbed, but and let's see, I have 20, 26 people said they weren't going to come. Well, one, one was my girl, and... Uh, I see her every day, so. Well, I don't see her here now. She dogged us. <laughs> Just for for Lisa, I'm I'm sorry that wasn't. I, you're a very nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, some friends actually showed up right before the show, so I think she went off with them. Um, but now yeah, like a, a lot of people didn't respond. Um, but I'm gonna have to make a master list. I don't want to invite people that never want to come. You know. All right, I gotta, I gotta split their home. Okay. Yeah. So they'd be like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, man, it was good talking with you. Yeah, see you. Yeah, All no right. problem. See ya. Take care. And then there were two. Two. And it's still two viewers. Pretty sure. <laughs> they'd only had one before, so... And they had zero at some point, so it's not us. It's actual people either watching or having it on. <laughs> I'm sure you'll have most of the most of these fine details worked out by the time that uh, I join you again in two weeks for this, yeah. this soiree. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have it worked out by the next time. You know, first time that, you know, I mean, last time I did this, it was clunky, but it kind of just popped up and everything was fine and, you know, um, this time it didn't, never popped up, and I started a whole other event, and uh, it was just confusing as hell. And um, people just said that they were drawing, but I couldn't seem to communicate with anyone. You know, which is G plus isn't Facebook, so. <laughs> no, it is. It's a. And granted, I only say this because I haven't used it a lot, and I don't use it a lot, but it does strike me as a weird hybrid of, like, three different uh, social media sites, and it mm. can't decide what it wants to do amongst any of them. Uh, the Hangout it, thing is handy, but it's a learning curve. It's all a learning curve. Yeah. You know, like, when I did the first three, it... It wasn't all connected. Um, not that it wasn't less confusing, but those went much smoother. I don't know. Maybe I should watch those. Remember how much of a pain in the ass they were. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a that's a little soon to be uh, put on the rose-colored glasses, but <laughs> yeah. These are only four weeks ago. It turns out these were actually horrible to set up. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it's a great service they provide, and it's kind of cool that it gets posted up on YouTube, and people can watch it if they care, like I said. And, you know, no, that part's very cool. That... Uh, that's something that I'm 
or something like this is still uh, something I'm kind of want to do for my uh, Patreon at some point. Right. I just want to do a couple test runs and figure out. I, I might not even do it for a Patreon, you know. I might just, <laughs> I might just make it an invite only, you know. Here's like five, six people that I like hanging out with. We'll draw comics while we do it. Mm-hmm. I think if uh, I don't have that many patrons, but if they wanted to do a hangout, I'd be into it. A friend so of mine. Put, uh, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say I put um, into the chat g- digitalwebbing. dot oh, com cool. slash forums. Uh, he he did take you know it used to be much more but it's just forums now. Uh, it's okay. Put, I that is that is bookmarked. <laughs> I am checking that out. The good thing is. Um, there's comic work. I mean, you know, if you're looking for comic work, he posts. Well, he doesn't post. It, it's just people go there and say, "Yeah, I'm working on a book, looking for artists. This is what I pay, or this will be your cut, or whatever." Yeah, you know, people See respond that? right away. So if you're really looking, you got to be on top of it. That could be a that could be really handy because, yeah, I am not good at uh, actually drumming up the work. Um, but then again, I'm so busy lately anyway. I probably shouldn't even worry about it. Uh, a friend of mine just uh, started a Patreon, uh, and he like kind of set his his goals, and they were humble enough, like. Uh, his max goal is uh, thirty dollars per post because he does a blog. Uh, I was so happy for him. He rattled off that whole thing in uh, inside of twenty four hours. He met his main goal. All right, cool. I'm like, <laughs> way to go, dude. Yeah, is a, a lot of successful people with it. <clears throat> I don't know if you know, there's a uh, Facebook group, Patreon Facebook group. Um, well, I should probably look that up because I uh, actually I, I know part of it is I just need to be more active on uh, in, in more areas you know like talking to more people and uh, being more proactive and getting eyeballs in front of the comic but it, that's tough for me <laughs> mostly because it takes away from actually making the comic uh, yeah, but it's, but it's something got to be done. You know, if if you had if you had a big crowd, and you know you have printed books and you have print and you have you know whatever people are interested, you know stuff to sell, merchandise related to the book, then you know you'd be making a better living off of it and. It would be worth it to put in extra time on it, and so on and so on. No, that's that's legit. That's true. Uh, just wait till my bright eyes kicks your everyday <laughs> abnormal ass. <laughs> I I say I say this uh, in all honesty. I hope it does because I want. Good stuff to succeed, and I want my friends to be successful. <laughs> I am trying really hard to always maintain, you know, not resenting my friends' successes because that's an easy thing to do as an artist. <laughs> well, I, I think it's it will be a long time before I'm um, like of your quality, man. That's for sure. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I uh, I spent a lot of years just being an idiot when I could have been honing my craft and. Uh, that sent me back a lot of time. That sent me back a lot of time. So I think we all do that. I mean, you know, I should have been drawing from the get go, and you know, I spent years just inking, and inking only teaches you one thing: inking. Yeah. 
That's true. Well, uh, although I mean, you know, I, I, I am more knowledgeable about art, but uh, penciling is a, is a different skill. You know, it's no, it it's, takes me too long to do a page, but I'm just getting used to it. That's a that is the thing about comics that fascinates me as an art form is every piece of the comic is such a different skill set. Yeah. You know, writing a comic is a very, very different skill set than uh, penciling it is, and penciling is a very different skill set than inking it is, and uh, color is always just color, yeah. for me, and I can't freaking color for <laughs> nearly as well as I want to, and lettering nobody considers a skill set, and it absolutely is. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you see uh, June and James fight a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, man, on the one hand, I, I feel like it could only really be married to an artist, because only an artist, you know, would really understand putting the art first. On the other hand, it's like, that's that's got to be rough on a relationship. <laughs> hmm. But uh, I think it's I think it's because you know they they're doing their jobs not when they're together but when they're you know just separate places. Yeah. You know, he's at work or whatever whenever he pro posts it up and it's like she looks at it later and it's like wait a minute <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be like that. But anyway, I'm well, just and it, well no. It works for them, obviously, because uh, they're an obnoxiously cute couple, and uh, they haven't strangled each other, and they make some awesome freaking comics. So, yeah, it's 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 like how could you, you know, do three hundred pages of a comic together and not be super awesome? <laughs> yeah, that's a that is enough time to work a bunch of the kinks out. <laughs> Although, that's a that's a thing. I mean. You almost kind of forget uh, when you're reading through it, but if you read the last chunk of The Other Grey Meat and then go back and read some of the first strips, like, that's amazing to see. June's, uh, June's art developed so much from... Yeah. Well, everything it's, developed about it. Um, the writing, you know. I think, yeah, June's, uh, June's art is probably the more obvious, but uh, I think uh, James got a lot more confident with his jokes and his characterization. And... But it's still recognizably the same comic, which is kind of impressive, too. Yeah. But that's a lot of comic, you know. 300 that is a hell of a lot of comic. I'm I'm almost about to crack the uh, vaunted 300 mark. Mm -hmm. I, uh, now, is that 300 your pages or just 300 of the comic? Um, I am... Because you had other artists. Yeah, no... Uh, yeah. You, read, you not, wrote maybe 300. Not, not, count, not counting them and not counting... Uh, and not counting uh, stuff that isn't comic related that is on the comic site. I'm looking this up right now here. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Um, I have 40 pages to go, and I will hit the 300 mark of stuff that I have of pages that I've drawn. Uh -huh. Which prior to that. Uh, the thing that I had spent the longest, the project that I spent the longest amount of time on, I got to page 100, or like 107 or something. Right. So, wow. so uh, Everyday Abnormal is now officially the thing that I've put the most of my life into of anything. <laughs> it's impressive, man. I, re I remember reading the first page, the first chapter, and I guess it was a long time ago. Um, you know, I read it after you did it, but um, you know, you've come a long way and I always liked the reading. It's always you know I 
I, that that means a lot to me, man. That uh, that's that's cool. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate that you've hung around and been such a vocal fan for as long as you have. That I appreciate the hell out of that. And you, you, ha- I, I don't even remember when you uh, started reading it, but you've been you've been reading it for a good long while. Yeah, I don't think it was when you just, you know posted it up, but. But it's been a while. Yeah, I think um, if you know I th- Christie's book was that. How long ago was that? Uh, she actually only she actually only started like six months before I did, which surprised me. When I when I realized uh, that. Let me see. Okay, I just got a me- message from Greg. He says he can't get in. Damn you, Hangouts! Let Greg uh, in! Let's see, if I invite him directly from here, which I thought I did. Alright, go away. Uh, as direct as it could possibly get. I wasn't planning on staying longer, but if you just didn't show up, then. <laughs> Let's see. There he is. Hey, man. I think I'm here. Yes, you are. Hey, I see somebody. <laughs> I think I'm. He- I think I'm here. I think I'm a person. Um, you seem to be so a person. You had no luck whatsoever getting in previous to just now when I sent you a direct invite. What's that? Um, I've been having all sorts of trouble with this uh, event and hangout. Um, right. I tried posting on the event wall the proper... Yeah. Whoa. Oh, now I see a bunch of messages. Wait. Oh, so hold on a second. Hold on. <laughs> I, I just realized I had the YouTube page open. Yeah, no problem. I was, like, <laughs> hearing myself on delay. Hey, not, yeah. not the first time we've had that tonight. <laughs> no, I imagine not. No, I thought I was supposed to go to the YouTube page, but I think I didn't get a. Uh, you know what? It, well, you know what it is. Uh, you have to probably uh, invite people to a hangout live. You, you can't just like post an invite. So since I wasn't around, there wasn't any way for me to get in. Uh, I think that's. I don't think you can like. Yeah, I don't think you can like send in a message an invite for a hangout later. I think it has to be done live, the actively live. You know, that may be what it is. That uh, that seems wise. Well, not you know in terms of I me, mean, not in terms of you know de- wise you. design, but thank you, <laughs> thank you. I I thank you. <laughs> Who am I talking to, <laughs> by the way? I'm John. Peter. Hey, John. Hey, and what do you do, John? I uh, I am the creator of Everyday Abnormal, which is an urban fantasy web comic. Oh, cool! Is that you drawing right now, or is that Peter? That, that is That's... me drawing right now. Right on. So you're doing a long form strip? Hey, that's cool. Whoa! Oh yeah, that's great. I do that. <laughs> is that what you're working on now? Yeah. Um, this is tomorrow's update. And, and that's what you're working on now, Peter. Well, I was just sketching. Okay. Whoa, yeah. I, I, I saw it the first. I was able to make it out the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I do but, a long form strip too. We are brave going, people. <laughs> How's that going, Greg? I just got the latest page done early today and posted. What uh, What comic you got, man? It's called Holiday Mountain Madness, and it's a... Is 
And, uh, I'm going to look this up. Okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Holiday. This guy just checked out my 100 days of making comics. <laughs> Woohoo! It's good having friends or who are fans. That that is nice. Uh, Google is failing me, Greg. Can you uh, send me? Can you like put a link in the uh, chat window so I can check it out <laughs> later? Good. <laughs> Holy cats. I love what you're doing, like your textures and colors, man. You're having fun. Holy sh wow. That is that is just nice to look at. Pretty. Let me just see, see the rest of the comic. He's done some wild stuff. Bookmarked. <laughs> yes, yes. And oh, <clears throat> uh, well, I'll do it myself. I, I'm going to put links in the uh, description box of this video. Oh, did we lose him? We lost him. Yeah, it looks like. Looks like he uh, got kicked somehow. Oh. Bummer. Uh, maybe it's on. Maybe it's his computer or something. It could happen. Uh. But, hey, got a new comic to read out of it. <laughs> yeah. Bright side. Bright side. <laughs> yeah, Greg, uh, what's his name? Um, Flame Ape. I don't know. For a long time, he was known as Flame Ape. Uh, I think that's, like, his Twitter name. And it used to be his G Plus name. Uh, it's just a name he went by. <clears throat> but heck of a talented guy and has so many opinions about comics. Uh, like you mentioned, he was on a, a previous studio synergy and he can he can go on and dig into things like no one else. That's cool. He uh I just saw that one page of his comic, that is impressive as hell. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, like the way he's like playing with colors and textures, and that's just wild stuff. And it's very like indie looking. I like, I really like it. Holiday Mountain Madness. <laughs> that is a great title too. I love that. Mm -hmm. That uh, that's very compelling. I mean, you know, if I had to pick a company that this would fit in, it's like it's like Vertigo book or Dark Horse book. You would know, comfortably print something like this. Yeah, although uh, I would almost say Image because they are. Yeah. They're like the only, they're like the only company right now that's willing to take a chance on the stuff that isn't 
necessarily commercial. All right. Uh, all right. I guess the only big company, a lot of the smaller companies will, obviously. But... I want to, but I gotta get this thing finished. Please. Get that thing finished. I gotta get my yeah. second page finished so I can post it tomorrow. I'll probably um, finish it tomorrow. Uh, I think we gotta go food shopping tonight. Yay! Yay! Ooh. Food's good. Uh, Ooh. I am uh, I am getting that like uh, excited feeling because I'm getting towards the end of a chapter. <laughs> like, you know, I always start getting a little bit antsy when uh, once I start start getting to, towards the end of any given uh, chapter of the book. Right. So how's it all tied together? I forgot. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one. This one was freaking dangerous because I didn't actually have an end. I didn't have an ending in mind when I started the thing, uh, so I was really kind of hoping I'd figure out a good way to end it uh, before I uh, before I got there, and I did. I'm actually really happy with uh, how this one ends off, but <laughs> it was a little touch and go there. Hmm. Couple scenes are just like, okay, what am I doing next? Uh, but now I got probably ten more pages on this, and then then I got chapter eight, and that is going to be brutal. <laughs> you said it's going to be like a hundred pages of him. Yeah, it's that's. That's what I got the first draft of the script at is is a hundred pages or close to it, because uh, it's it's really involved. It was the first time that I felt like I had to write a script for the whole thing because it keeps going into flashbacks and it's got a time limit uh, in the story, so I have to keep pay, so I have to keep checking where uh, how much time is left and. It's kind of crazy, but I think it's going to pay off. I think it's going to be the most accomplished chapter of it yet, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm redoing her face. That's just... <laughs> it's not great. Let's see. Oh, I'm back. You mean invite me? Is that the only way in? Jeez, this thing sucks. <clears throat> okay. Only because he asked. There he is. Hey, Greg. Hey, Greg's back. Maybe. Hey, there he is. There All he right. is. <laughs> yeah, my computer decided it would freeze for the upteenth million time. Oh, no. Oh, that's cool. Oh, it's <laughs> awesome. I live for it. 
That's anytime, right. And anytime that it does that, it's at the exact best time to lose Photoshop files and all that shit. Mm. Thank God Photoshop CS6 has the recovery mode. Uh, otherwise, right. I would have even I would even have pulled more hair out of my head. <laughs> we would have got you back on screen, and you'd be bald. <laughs> there'd, be, there'd be giant patches of blood on my scalp. <laughs> hey guys, how's the chat going? You don't look so good, Greg. I feel okay. No, it's Very just it's just red hair dye. It's just red hair dye. <laughs> Um, yeah, I hope it didn't glitch your, your, uh, hangout. Um, <clears throat> no, you just sort of disappear and... Poof. Um, what, was me inviting you the only way back in? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because you're the, you're the hub, and I think that's how it works. You, know, you have to live, you have to invite people. Yeah. Okay. That's how it works. Which means that basically everybody has to be prepared to be called on and have like their one of their Google windows open of some sort yeah. to get uh, uh, called in. Yeah. I mean, it, make, it makes sense because, I guess, you know, it makes Google sense, I guess. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the best way to put that. It makes Google sense. <laughs> it makes yeah. Google sense. Yeah. Google just don't make sense, <laughs> but uh. <laughs> although they have these cool free products, so I don't know. It's yeah. like it's like the, you know, but it's for free, you know. So it's yeah. You know. <laughs> it fits within my budget. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> it is nice fast. that it, it'll dump it straight out to YouTube, right? Yeah. No, it's it's. Um, I mean, it's live there now. You can go to my YouTube channel, I think, or. Oh, yeah. Some link and watch it live. That's right. Um, yeah, that's how I was watching it first to say, hey, I'm here. Right, right. Oh, I see. It has screen share. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, you, you can do stuff on your computer and share it. That's what he's doing right now. Right, right. <laughs> and all this time you thought it was just witchcraft. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I didn't know if that was on your end or if that was on the, the, the Hangout uh, software end. No, it's actually, uh, yeah, it's actually just the Hangout. That's cool. It is handy. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I don't know if you even heard anything that I said or where it cut off or whatever. Uh, uh, I think we... I think we were just discussing uh, long form comics, and I was kind of staring agape at the uh, <laughs> at the work. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. page. Oh, you you were able to see my work? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I said. But if you I put a link in the chat, there's a. Oh, thanks. If, thanks a lot. If you go to the left of the screen, sure. If you go to the left of the screen, is uh, what is it? Um, yeah, the, the top one is chat. And then it opens up, and, and there's a couple of links there. Oh, okay, cool. Put it up there. All right, so, so then I'll uh, I'll check out your stuff, too, then. Um, John's thing is Everyday Abnormal, the comic series, which is the top one I posted there. Kind of looks like the what's on the screen. <laughs> right. Except for, I'm sure, in color and everything else. Okay, here I am. Oh, that's interesting. So you do, like, a monochrome black and white comic. Yeah, I'm not fast enough to actually do color all the time, so... Uh, no, that's a really smart thing to do, then. But I actually uh, I actually made it work for me, because I do have spot color in very, very specific points in the comic. Oh, okay. Because uh, there's no, good work. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's getting there. <laughs> Slowly well, you know, well, everybody's got stuff that they need to do, but no, it's solid. You know, it's there. Oh, there's some color stuff. Yeah, the uh, page twenty-three. 
Yeah, the, uh, I guess kind of spoiler, but I'm proud of it, so I'm going to say it anyway. Because uh, they're always investigating, you know, uh, monsters and magic and high-tech stuff. Uh, the specific tell for mythological or uh, deific stuff, anything of the gods or from truly supernatural stuff is always in color. Oh, that's a good idea. Because the, the idea is that they are literally more than the mortal world. <laughs> So. Yeah, no, that's that's a good way to that's a good way to use it to your advantage. Yeah, it's only come up a couple of times, but uh, it does it does stand the hell out when when it shows up. So yeah, uh, no, that's it's good. It's just like Sin City does that, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, his thing is he just picks a color for every story. Yeah, and that's that. That's how that you know. Uh, I was being facetious. Oh, um, <laughs> when magic happens in Sin City. Oh, when magic happens, yeah. We just call that Marv. <laughs> Marv. Well, he's certainly I'm superhuman. Look, I'm looking forward to uh, the new Sin City movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh sure. Oh, definitely. Because um, yeah, I saw, I saw the new 300 and. It had a couple of really great scenes and things happen in it, but as a whole movie, it just kind of didn't grab me. Something it, did, it didn't seem, yeah, it didn't even from the previews, it just didn't seem like it would be. Uh, it's beautiful to look at. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Well, I, I just. I'm curious as to. You know, obviously I know why they made it, because there was a hell of a lot of money that they were thinking they were leaving on the table. Sure. But uh, just from the, from the artistic perspective, I'm trying to figure out exactly what loose ends were we trying to tie up from the first 300. Oh, well, don't think of it that way. <laughs> because there weren't any, but... Um, yeah, exactly. You know, I'm sure this movie happened because of Frank. <laughs> well, I would think that also, when they optioned the thing in the first place, and they really knew they were going to do it, I'm sure the final contract said like you know three movies or something like that. Because mm-hmm. even when they got 300 going, they had still had enough successes with other stuff that they probably. I'm. I got a feeling that they that they just do three movie like they just, they don't even if there's nothing there to make, they just kind of like automatically default to. You know, and we will make, and we can, we have the option to make sequels for X amount of time or something like that. Yeah, I imagine anymore. I mean, what? Well, you know what surprised me? Um, there's a new Dumb and Dumber coming out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even even after yeah, they did a Dumb and Dumber movie with totally different actors and you know yeah. a prequel or whatever. Um, the original characters come back with a new sequel, um, and, and it actually looks funny, um, but it's like out of left field, kind of. Well, they can't make up anything new anymore. <laughs> There's very yeah. little, you know. It's it's just really. Uh, it's I I have a few friends that are in the film industry, and you know what they tell me is like. It's just like buttloads of the same, like like uh, buttloads of the same stuff that that are made by executives who have absolutely no experience in any creative outlet. They just mm-hmm. come from another, like somebody you know, somebody's credentials for becoming a movie executive is that they were, you know, um, an executive vice president at like, you know, uh, a company that makes screws. Or like is a fi- or most of them are from the financial sector, and like they don't know anything about anything, and so all they look at is like, well, what movies made money the last ten years? And then you go, oh, let's make that because they actually don't even have any functionally functional creative, you know, uh, critical thinking to to even say like, let's let's make this bold new thing. Like, there's no bold new thing because they. All they are interested in, literally, is money. And then everybody in the creative end of the movie industry has to kind of just sort of, like, you know, follow the leader 
and the leader has no head, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure a lot of things are like that, because I know, yeah. like, working at comic publishers, not naming names, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it's a suit thing sometimes, and uh, you got to make the money. I understand that, but absolutely. Why do you know, like in the case of like Marvel? God, eighteen X Men titles is that? Yeah. You know, do two awesome ones a month. Or how many Batman and, and, titles? Yeah, I mean, if just keep it down to two. A month, the numbers would be so much higher because then you could focus on quality of a book. I uh, blah, blah, I seriously blah. think I it's seriously like think. the creative talking. <laughs> right, I'm with you. I think that yeah. I think they'd probably be in a lot healthier financial place if they uh, focus on quality and getting you know, because in the in the 80s when everything was on the upswing, you know there were. There was an X Men book, and it was moving friggin' eight hundred thousand units a month. <laughs> well, I I think what it ultimately came down to is that the the everything exploded in the nineties, and they were able to sell many many titles under any particular banner. You know, there were multiple Spider Mans, multiple X Men's, multiple whatever. Yeah. Punisher, remember. There was like how many, like three Punisher titles or something like that. <laughs> yeah, there was and, three monthly Punisher books. <laughs> yeah, and like, and when that popped or when that bubble burst, um, uh, it's almost like um, nobody, nobody still be not believes, nobody still can handle the fact that the market can't support it. But at the same time, I mean, clearly the market must be supporting the books because they are publishing them, right? I mean, because they're, they're not going to do it out of the grace of their own heart. They're going to do it because they're selling books, right? But but still, it's like, um, it's almost like, well, surely there must be a way to sell all these books. <laughs> we'll just keep making them until they do, you know, like, or something. And But I think the other part, too, is now that the movies are so... yeah. You know, the movies are everything now. It's like everything is the movies. And, and the video games, maybe, because, like, Arkham Asylum and stuff, you know. Well, it's the whole package. I mean, that's, you know, that's the tail that wags the dog. Or that's the head yeah. of the dog and the tail of the dog now. You know, the, the comics are kind of like uh, the spleen of the dog. They, yeah. they keep the IP alive. Yeah. But it's the movies and the, and the video games and the toys yeah. uh, that make the money. Absolutely, yeah, and and, and it's the thing is, yeah, totally. The, the, and in fact, I was thinking like that's the. You, I mean, is it is it? It's scary and true that the only sector of the motion picture industry in which the executives who say like, well, we just make the same, grind out the same stuff, but it turns out okay, is the comic book movies because when you make another Avengers movie. It's cool because it's the continuing saga of the Avengers, right? Right. So, so the, they got this lightning in a bottle thing where, like, you can keep churning out the Man of Steel. In fact, it's almost like, you know, the the inverse property of usually, like, you know, by the fourth movie of any thing, it's it's terrible, right? Or at least it's never as good as the first, right? But with comic right. book movies, they seem to always make them better as they go along. And the audience wants the continuing adventures of Captain America. They're going to be upset when there's no more Captain America movies, right? So it's almost like that's oh the God, one the part Lord. of the film industry, you know, or whatever your favorite thing is, you know. But it's, it's kind of funny. funny. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the only one where they really effed it up was Fantastic Four. Uh, it, that, I'm not even sure you can really blame on Fox because I think uh, – this is just my pet theory. I could be completely wrong, but I think that uh, the Fantastic Four is so heavily the like you needed it to be the '60s in order to make the Fantastic Four what it was. Oh, I totally, like, I totally agree. Yeah, like I, I oh, think. Yeah. I mean, it's not. I'm not knocking it because it really was. It, it really was a genre defining in a lot of ways. Uh, yeah. Everything that wasn't Spider-Man. That was revolutionary in '60s comics. Was Fantastic Four? Oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I think, kind of unlike Spider-Man in some ways, 
all of that was very, very heavily tied to where you're at in science and culture and everything in the 60s. It was and of its time. Yeah. Yeah. Like well, a, and I think the other thing that was so glaringly missing, but you wouldn't know it until you made the movie, is there was no Jack Kirby in there. Yeah. Right? It was It was sort of like, at best, a really limp imitation of Ultimate Fantastic Four, which is probably the worst Fantastic Four book ever made. Yeah. And no matter what, how you'd go about it, it's just really not good. Um, oh, yeah. and, that's, and that's what it is, is like the essential core... I mean, it just shows you how much Jack Kirby was part of that thing, because when you pull him out, it's like deflated balloons on the floor. You know, it doesn't really... It's not. It's static, and it and it and it's and it's sort of slick, and and it's not dynamic. And and if they had made those movies with an with, it's almost like if they had made those movies after Watchmen and after Three Hundred and after um, yeah. Sin City, where like they set the precedent for like, oh no, you got to make the comic like like as though the comic book's the blueprint for the movie. If they had had that attitude with Fantastic Four. It would have been like the greatest comic book movie ever made. You know, maybe if if you'd had the right director who sat there and said this movie's got to look like Jack Kirby drawings come to life, then you'd have a good movie because everything's in in the Jack Kirby part of Fantastic Four. Yeah, um, that's what the and I don't think that's going to happen with this new movie either. I'm, I don't I'm know really if they're doing a new movie. <laughs> Oh, you you think that maybe it might it might glitch at the last minute and not really happen? Uh, you know, I I see posts about it every now and then. It seems to be wavering. Like if they're going to do it, if they're going, that's going to be the cast. I don't know what's going on. It's so it's so weird. It's so weird and not what you would think of Fantastic Four, to me. Yeah, but you Even, know, for I'll all see of. Oh, go ahead. Dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For all of it was, for all its like uh, flaws, I, I, I still like, uh, and I'll even get fights with people about it. I think Michael Chiklis was awesome as the thing. I thought he was perfect casting. He he was the only perfect cast in that flick. But goddamn, who was? I was sad they didn't cast him again. Honestly, that's what I that's what <laughs> I was saying. Have let that guy play the same part all over again, like. I, I like the kid they got as the torch, and he looks like he's going to be the Michael Chiklis bit, where he's the only well cast member in that movie. Yeah, uh, yeah. But they should have. I mean, I know that why they didn't, because it seems to be like a, a jinx or something. But go back to the well. <laughs> he wants to do it. Michael Chiklis wants to do it. Oh, he'd play. You know? He would play the thing forever. He'd be happy to get a check from Disney. And he'd be perfect. I mean, I can't. It's really hard to imagine anybody but him playing it at this point in my head, unless it was like, again, somebody who's big and burly and has that attitude, and uh, you know. And the, and I think part of it was like, you know, you know, like the classic FF story where like you know Ben Grimm gets hit by a laser beam and he turns back into Ben Grimm, right? You know, right. yeah. yeah. You could see if 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 they ever had a scene like that, and he turned into Michael Chiklis, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, that's Ben Grimm, no problem." <laughs> yeah, if he's bald, you'd be like, "No, no, that's Ben Grimm. It's all right. It's good." He, but he, then, was, a be- he was a he was a better Grimm than any comics Ben Grimm was because comics Ben Grimm always had hair. Well, <laughs> it's like one of those things that like you never realize that that dude should just be bald. <laughs> <laughs> well, at this point, he should be, yeah, right. You know, like, after he transforms the first time, yeah. But, yeah, no, it's just, it, it's, I don't know. It, it's weird. Like, Fantastic Four has kind of a curse on it, you know. It's it's a it's a f- funky thing. It's like the original Hanna-Barbera cartoon was kind of lame. I mean, it was fun to watch, but it was kind of lame. And then there was the Roger Corman movie that did never, that actually never got distributed. And then it was, it was out on bootleg right. video. And that was very lame, and and then the fir- the real movies, and they were kind of lame, and and then I was so psyched, I was like, oh, the guy from uh, whatever that movie was, he's going to direct it. This is awesome, and then it's like, oh, it's a whole bunch of like CW people. <laughs> it's like the CW Fantastic Four. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's so yeah, I don't know. What, it's like I don't know what anyone's thinking, you know. Uh, I'll tell you when I I tell you the mo- exact moment I knew that the uh, the first 
major live action Fantastic Four flicks were gonna suck. Uh, was the guy who uh, played Victor Von Doom actually mm. spent like three months with a vocal coach learning yeah. an Eastern European accent, <laughs> and then they told him to drop it. <laughs> Yeah, but, like, yeah. when I heard that they told her to drop it, I'm like, oh, Jesus, shit, we're in trouble right now. <laughs> like, nothing good is coming from this. Oh, man. Yeah, it's it's a hard... It's, I don't know. It's, um, it's one of those ideas where it's, like, in theory, it seems like it should be, like, the most spectacular movie ever. And then the execution always, like, falls way short. Um, and I just wonder if it's almost like really people... The people who are given the job just don't get FF core. Well, I, th- I, core I think level. a lot of I think a lot of the stuff that made Fantastic Four great in uh, 1960 in the 1960s uh, has just been replaced. You know, like yeah. a lot of the stuff a lot of the stuff that made that a uh, special and unique experience because the that whole grandiose, uh, you know. Jack Kirby's whole uh, panoramic vision of stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, Stan Lee's grandiose whole dialogue and uh, and characters in this, uh, you know, all of that was very very trend setting, and then it became the trend, and other stuff is kind of like built on that, and yeah. uh, I think so. I mean. It's almost I'm not, like I'm not, sure it, how you, I'm not sure how you do that without taking a little bit of a step back in some way. Well, you know, you know what it makes me think of is like what the, maybe the best FF movie or st- premise would be a Rip Van Winkle story. <laughs> you know, there's the I super team and they were huge in the '60s and and they were saving the world and doing all these wild things and then like it, I don't know, like in 1970 something they went out in space and they went and suspended animation and then somebody finds them and. Now they're like they got to contend with a cynical, dark world, you know, or something like that. Maybe you know that might be like almost like the Brady movie in a way, you know, like like they're still going shucks and darn, and you know <laughs> they've got they've got you know like well groomed hair and I would almost be willing to pay money to see that. And you I don't know what I mean, like, almost like, anything. Like that would be kind of cool because then you would be able to get away with depicting them in their original form, you know. Yeah. You know, and know. That, that might be fun, kind of fun. It's a but, tough nut to crack. It but really nobody is. would ever, nobody would ever, ever greenlight a movie like that. That's the thing. Uh, you know, they just probably, never would do that. Probably not. <laughs> no, it's too con- It's too conceptual, and you know, and it, and it, again, it would, it would involve not having all the cast be played by, you know, sort of CW actors. <laughs> You know, they would have to actually have gravitas and age and, you know, maturity and stuff like that. You know, like, because remember, like, the thing that was cool about those characters is, like, Sue was probably, I don't know, like, late 20s or something, and Johnny was in high school when he started or maybe just about to get into college. But Ben Grimm and Reed Richards were fought in World War II, so in the 60s even, that still made them, like, 40 years old. Yeah. We were around there. They were mature men, and and Sue was a mature woman, you know, and uh, and I think that's one of the flaws. The invisible girl. <laughs> yeah, well, that's 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 sort of madman sexism kind of stuff right there. Yeah. But no, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it entertains me as all. I think I think the uh, one that's one of the missing components, and that's why Ultimate of, uh, Fantastic Four doesn't work for me is is like they're supposed to be older than us, kind of. You know, they're supposed to be mature adults. They're not supposed to be kids. Yeah, and, and like the first family. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like when Jack Kirby draws like Reed Richards, he looks like he could be maybe your dad because remember he used to have the pipe. Yeah, right. He used yeah. to have the the suit and he'd have the little little fedora, snap rim fedora, and he had the pipe and stuff. And it's like, hey, honey, I'm home. You know, like <laughs> that's not what twenty year olds do. That's you got to be like close to forty. And I thought that's well, he's got the great temples. I mean, that's he's got the great temples. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, uh, and and Ben's older than him. I will say, uh, Warren Ellis. I mean, granted, I'm because I'm a sucker for Warren Ellis, but his yeah. second, he he did the uh, second, maybe the yeah, he did the second and third story arcs of Ultimate Fantastic Four, and those are better just because um, 
Well, <laughs> the first arc, because because he wrote him, and, you know, he's insane. So, you know, I, you get I, would, I didn't know that he wrote uh, anything like that. I didn't know he wrote any Fantastic Four stuff. No, he uh, he wrote Ultimate Fantastic Four, and uh, like that, all of this ended up getting undone when. Uh, like Mark Miller took back over writing, but uh, mm. he had Doctor Doom because Doctor Doom was in the same uh, ex- was in the same experiment that went wrong, and uh, had him turning into metal, kind of playing off of the whole, much like they did in the movie, only you know not shitty, but like mm-hmm. uh, when his like when his mutation made him not human, he had uh, freaking goat legs. Uh, Oh, okay. So he was like massively transformed. Yeah. Uh, oh, at one okay. at one point he like opens up. Like, at one point he uh, opens up his mouth and shoots poison gas at uh, Sue. I think. Wow. <laughs> like he's not human anymore. Mm. Uh, and then, and then uh, at one like at the next one they bring in the uh, ultimate version of Annihilus and he's like uh, scary as hell. I mean, like. You get somebody like that who has these really, really big ideas, and you can kind of get a shred of that uh, Jack Kirby feeling just because the ideas are so crazy. Oh Actually, yeah. Maybe, maybe that's maybe that's why maybe that's why you can't do a Fantastic Four movies because uh, people aren't just aren't willing to finance the crazy ideas like Jack yeah. and Stan had. Well, that's true because day. with all of those with all of the stuff that was made, they never got into Annihilus or any of the characters that are like really out there. It's always Doctor Doom, and they did Sil- Silver Surfer, but uh, and and Galactus uh, was uh, basically, you know, non non-existent. I mean, that was another that was such a fa- that was such a letdown. Oh yeah, my I don't Galactus as a clown. Yeah, that works. I, oh my I, gosh, that was so that, that was heartbroken, man. <laughs> See, that was. Uh, <laughs> That was a really, really stupid takeoff of another Warren Ellis idea because uh, he did uh, the Ultimate Galactus trilogy, but that was uh, that had the Ultimates and the Fantastic Four and the X Men all in that, and uh, it wasn't he wasn't just a cloud; he was like a biomechanical mass that like kept getting scarier as the story went on. Oh, uh, I see. So, so it was a whole entire different take on. What Galactus meant or was or something? Yeah, the because uh, it wasn't Galactus as it, like a take off the word galaxy. It was Galactus, like our corruption of whatever alien word keeps fo- keeps following this thing around. Uh, uh, and uh, the Silver Surfers weren't heralds to announce his coming. They were uh, like disguised as humans and leading suicide cults because the thing hates organic life so much that it doesn't want to be in contact with it. <laughs> like it'll come and eat a planet, but it doesn't want the filthy humans actually on the planet when it gets there. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, a lot of so a lot of crazy ideas. And then, then somewhere, just like some executive saw that it's like, yeah, we'll just turn it into a cloud. That's cool. I I would have preferred so, look, right, purple armor guys. Down. Um, I'm gonna close this out soon, but I want to mention a couple things. Um. I don't know if you watched the the last one, John. I did not. Okay, because of the new Hangout, when it gets posted to YouTube, it's whatever screen is big is the only screen you see. So this (laughs) this episode has been about you. Um, oh, oh, uh, right. That's right. Whatever is the primary window is the is the video that yeah, is the primary video. Yep. Um, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure right. I want to be the the, t- the center of attention on this, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am going to do anyone that's still listening and watching. Uh, I am going to do. The exact same time next week with a hangout. I'm not gonna set it up until I know it fully inside out, so that it goes perfectly next time. Uh, apologies to everybody who didn't make it because I didn't invite you personally or something. Um, we'll get this figured out and get a good one set up. Uh, 
because I, you know, there's like 22, 23 people that wanted to come to this. Uh, you know, a good many of them said maybe, but still, I, you know, it's, it's hard to communicate on G+, and I don't know who's still around and all that jazz, but uh, right. we'll, get, we'll get it sorted out. And thank you, Greg, for showing up. Uh, yeah, no problem. I don't think I can do next one, the next one, uh, yeah. but the oh, are you going to do this weekly or what are you going to do? Ah, uh, more than likely I'm going to do it weekly unless my schedule changes. But um, I might down the line try different days and hours. Okay. So I can get uh, different groups of people. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Everybody has uh, different schedules, so. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay, cool. So, you know, I'll invite you. If you can make it, you make it. If not, you're not. Right. That's That'd be great. Perfectly all right. Cool. Yeah. And thanks for uh, hanging out. Oh, thank you for showing out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it was good, great, good meeting you, man. Thank you, and you and too. I, uh, Your comic looks really great. Thanks. I'm going to uh, archive binge on yours here uh, <laughs> sometime soon and let you know what I think. That would be great. Please it was delightful. Oh, well, thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, and we have a Facebook page and all that jazz, so so make contact if you can. That would be great. I definitely will. All right. Thanks, Peter. Cool. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, John. Thank you very much, Peter. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and like and comment. Uh, I'll probably get a lot of hate mail for this one. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and this is the end of the broadcast. See you next time. Bye.